Now the um, the can you see how that's liquid? The uh, so we've got a syrup forming. See how that goes up? Anyway, after the lecture, come and have a look. So it's the syrup is forming. What I'm going to talk about now in, the, in our last um, 25 minutes is cayenne pepper and charcoal. And cayenne pepper, where is it? Cayenne pepper is a remarkable herb. You might be familiar with the book Back to Eden by Jethro Kloss. It's a whole book on herbs. He devotes half a page to every herb and 10 pages to cayenne pepper. He quotes a couple of doctors that use it in their practice and one doctor says it's impossible to abuse cayenne pepper and you will never cause a lesion. That means it, it, uh, it cannot hurt you. It keeps cats off the garden. Keeps cats off the garden. Oh. Wallabies? I'm trying to get wallabies out of my roses. And you can use it internally and you can use it externally. So internally you can use it for uh, a sore throat. Cayenne pepper for a sore throat? It'll tingle at first, but when the tingling goes, you'll get relief. You can use it to increase hydrochloric acid, if you've got low hydrochloric acid. Let's face it, it'll wake anything up. It'll heal a stomach ulcer. So you can use it internally also to thin the blood. Not only does cayenne pepper thin the blood, it opens the capillaries, it can help to heal the lining of the arteries. In fact, there is a book, and you can put this into the web, I think it's an e-book, it's called Curing with Cayenne by Sam Beiser, B-I-S-E-R. He's a medical journalist, and the whole book is on cayenne pepper. And he says in that book that you can heal heart muscle with cayenne pepper. It's a remarkable herb. You see, the life of the flesh is in the blood, the Bible says. One writer called the blood the river of life. And as you'll see tomorrow when we study hydrotherapy, um, any area in the body where you can get blood to that area, it will heal. And that's what hydrotherapy does, is it moves blood. Because the blood is the healer. Well, cayenne pepper moves blood. It brings blood to any area that you apply it. Some people are a bit cautious of cane pepper because it's been classified as a stimulant. But it's not like caffeine or alcohol or cigarettes which are nervous system stimulants. It's a blood stimulant and anything that stimulates blood is stimulating the healer. You see that? I had a lady in a cooking class who was in her 80s, this was a few years ago, and she had a heart attack. In fact, one of the staff said, Barbara, quick, lady's had a heart attack. So I ran down. She was lying on the floor, she was half conscious, her face was white. One of the guests, this guy, was holding a pulse, he said, the pulse is nearly gone. I said, quick, cayenne pepper. So we grabbed the cayenne pepper and I got about a half a teaspoon on a spoon, it was about that much, and I just put it straight into her mouth. And she was half conscious, we got her a little bit of water and she drank the water and all the colour came to her face and it must have been two minutes and the guy holding her pulse said, the pulse is strong. And the lady sat up and said, what happened? All the guests were going, wow, because <laughs> there was a whole heap of people there. I said, it's not me, it's the cane pepper. <laughs> it's remarkable. What did that cane pepper do? It immediately thinned the blood, it immediately opened the capillaries and remember one minute for one drop of blood to go around the whole body. And that's why in a couple of minutes we, we had a result. So it's a remarkable herb. I travel everywhere with it. Just in case there's a heart attack on the plane, well, they'd probably take me to jail if they saw what I did. <laughs> but it's there. I've got it there. It's a, a remarkable herb. It's the most powerful blood thinner. And tomorrow night I'll be talking about heart health um, at the Workers' Club. And I'll certainly be talking about cane pepper. There's no need to take rat poison, I mean Wolfrin. <laughs> they give it to humans, not enough to kill them, like the rats. But we had a lady who uh, did our program last week and she'd been on Wolfrin for 25 years. 
She changed specialists and the specialist was horrified she'd been on it that long. It's a very dangerous drug. Do you know what had been happening to her? She's getting eye bleeds. She's bleeding through her urine. She's bleeding through her bowel. She's getting bleeds everywhere because this thing is a blood thinner. Why was she on warfarin? She had a skiing accident. She hurt her knee. She dislocated it and they put it in plaster and they didn't put it in right and it was paining, paining, paining and they wouldn't take the plaster off. She ended up like so frustrated she took the plaster off and her leg was black because it was blocking her circulation and then they wanted to amputate it. She was 30 at the time and she said, <laughs> let me try and she was able to help her leg. But she ever had this lump behind her leg that whenever she did too much exercise it would come up and so they, that's why they had her on Wolfrin. Well, she came with her daughter and she said she's been off the Wolfrin for two years now and she feels so much better. If only they'd known about the cayenne pepper. Now, a lot of people are told that after the age of 40, everyone should be having half an aspirin to keep their blood thin. You've heard that? Well, all you need to do is drink two litres of water a day. That's the best blood thinner. And take cayenne pepper. What the research is showing now, that aspirin's causing brain bleeds, there's a contributing factor to Alzheimer's. It's causing eye bleeds, which is contributing to the deter deterioration of the eyesight. Whereas cayenne pepper, because of the increased blood flow it causes, sparks up your brain, improves your eyesight, because it affects blood. So you can take it internally. How do you take it? You can sprinkle it on your food, but not everyone likes it. So you can start with a quarter of a teaspoon in half a glass of water. I'm going to demo that to you. Now, if this is going to cause me trouble, you'll know, won't you? So I've got about a quarter of a glass of water there. Actually, I'll drink a bit. And I'm going to put about a quarter of a teaspoon in there. So I've got a nice red colour there. And what I'm, why I'm doing this is I want to, sh I want to tell you at every stage what's happening. Mm, it's a nice warm one. <coughs> right at this moment, um, my lips are okay because I didn't touch it, but I've got tingling in my mouth. I've got a lot of tingling in my back of my throat. Notice I called it tingling. Oh, it's reaching about here right now. Lovely warm feeling. Oh yes, it's just coming down into my stomach and it's a lovely warm feeling. The tingling in my throat has already eased. You see, it's not for long. It's not for long. Oh yes, my whole of my stomach is now nice and warm. <laughs> it's the best way to take it is by mouth. Now that looked like, did you think that looked like quite a strong dose? But it has not caused me discomfort. Notice I'm not perspiring profusely and I'm not coughing my head off. Isn't that what you would see? Oh yes, nice and warm, nice and warm <laughs> in the stomach now. It's the easiest way to take it. Already the tingling in my mouth has virtually stopped. The, the intensity in the back of my throat has totally eased. So you see, it's, it's not much discomfort at all. And it's the easiest way to take the cane pepper. Now I'm going to show you how you can apply the cane pepper externally. Why would you apply it externally? You would apply it to move blood to that area. Now if someone had hypothyroidism, that's underactive thyroid, they could make a little compress like this and apply it to their thyroid. It'll wake anything up. It'll warm it up. If someone had high peractive, high, in fact overactive thyroid, what would they apply to their thyroid? Ice. It's quite simple, isn't it? <laughs> Just basic. Now, I'm going to pretend that, um, that Jeremy has lost the feeling in his feet. And I'm going to show you how you can apply cane pepper compress to his feet. Would you like to take it? You would just do it to one foot, but you'd usually do it to two. And I've made it to about the size of his foot. And you're doing kitchen paper and you're doubling it. And I've got some glad wrap there. And you put a little bit of olive oil on the cloth. And what the olive oil does is it causes the cane to stick to the cloth. 
You don't want too much. I think I've put too much on, so I'll take a bit. At home I've got a fine pourer and it's easy to get just a little. So now I will sprinkle the cayenne pepper onto the cloth and you put on about half a teaspoon. I'll hold this up in a minute and show you what it looks like. Now, if Jeremy has lost feeling in his foot, and that is common if someone's had um, hydrotherapy, they suffer from, it's called peripheral um, neuropathy. What's the word? Yeah, sorry, peripheral neuropathy, meaning they've lost the feeling in their feet. Now, the reason you put the, cane, the olive oil there, see, if the olive oil wasn't there, all that cane pepper would have fallen off by now. So that's about how much you do. And what I'm going to do is put Jer Jeremy's foot on that and then put the plastic over and put a sock on. Now, um, Jeremy doesn't have peripheral neuropathy. And if I put it on his feet overnight, by about three in the morning, he would be waking up and ripping them off because his feet will be getting so hot. But if someone's got peripheral neuropathy and don't have feeling in their feet, when they wake up in the morning, they'll have pins and needles. What's pins and needles? That's the first sign of life coming back into the foot. Now, if someone doesn't have feeling in their feet, and often diabetics don't, um, people that have had chemo often don't, you cannot put their feet in hot water. If you put their feet in hot water, they cannot tell the heat and you can damage the tissues. So you cannot do that, but you can do this. And often people with peripheral neuropathy, they do not have, their feet are always cold. And if the feet are cold, you know what that means? There's not much blood going into the feet. And if there's no blood going in, there's no healer, no life going into the feet. And so the toes can start to die. And if someone has toes that are starting to die, you put this on their feet and they will not lose their toes. Isn't that good news? Because all you're doing is pulling the blood to the area. So now I'll show you how it's done. So the foot, it goes on and then the glad wrap goes over. Where's sock? That's a very easy, that's a very easy poultice, isn't it? So that's what you do for someone that doesn't have feeling in their feet. Remember, you never put their feet in hot or cold water, but that will warm their feet. We have quite a few ladies that come to our health center who complain of cold feet. They've always got cold feet. And it's a day like this, and I look at their feet and they've got sandals on, and I say, well, no wonder your feet are cold. <coughs> in the cold, you've got to warm them up. You see, perfect health requires perfect circulation. So if the feet are cold, you haven't got blood going down there. So what we do is we put uh, these cane pepper compresses on their feet overnight and in the morning they've got warm feet. Now I say buy some Ugg boots, buy some woolen socks, keep, keep, those, feet, keep those feet warm. So because Jeremy doesn't have peripheral neuropathy, we can take it off. Okay. Thank you, you can put that on there. In fact, if you know someone that has it, you can even make them up for them. And I just fold it over like that and wrap it up and then it's ready for, for them to use. And as you can see, it's a very easy poultice to use. Cane pepper can also be sprinkled into a cut and it will heal the cut. It'll cause it to pull together. Won't it hurt? Well, it's already hurting. So a little bit more hurts, not a big deal. And it, it doesn't tingle for long. And remember, when you apply it, just smile. When you smile, then everyone thinks everything's fine. <laughs> Now,
Now the last one we're going to look at is, is charcoal. Now charcoal is unique in that charcoal not only absorbs poisons, we've looked at onion, we've looked at potato, who are drawers, but this neutralizes poison, nothing else will do that. So you can take it internally for any cases of poisoning, overdoses. Uh, you can also take it for diarrhea, for upset stomach, and you can apply it externally. And when you apply it externally, you apply it probably for a few reasons, but one would be for a bee sting, for an ant bite, for a snake bite, for, for a wasp sting. And it's quite incredible how the pain goes almost straight away, as soon as you put that charcoal poultice on. You can also use it for uh, a congested chest, you can use it for a boil, you can also use it for a sore eyes. Whenever I'm doing a poultice when there's an element of pus there, I always use the poultice because it'll absorb and neutralize poisons. Now it's very messy stuff, so I'm about to show you how to make uh, charcoal poultice with no mess. So what you need is a snap lock bag, a big one like this, and you do uh, psyllium and charcoal and water and, you, and I'll seal it and you massage it and then you can roll it out. So you put about um, half psyllium and half charcoal. So I'm going to do three teaspoons of psyllium and then I'm going to do three teaspoons of charcoal. I'll just give you uh, the latest comment on my cane pepper. I'm now feeling very hungry. <laughs> must, have, must have stimulated my appetite. But you know what? You don't have to eat when you're hungry, you just have water. So I say to my stomach, it's not lunchtime, drink water. Uh -huh. PSY. Double L, I U M. One, two, three. See, it's very messy stuff, charcoal. You always put the lid back on, because if I drop this container here, I'd never be forgiven. And then you put some water in. and then you seal the bag. Um, I put about half a cup in and then you start massaging it. So then you just mix it all together. Because that's always been the problem, is it's so messy to work with. You see it's all contained in the plastic bag. Yeah, yeah. Now there's a few other things that I have used in times past for this and that is um, uh, ground linseed will do this too, but ground linseed's a lot, linseed's a lot more expensive than psyllium and you can also use slippery elm and slippery elm's more expensive too but the psyllium's quite cheap. If you think it's looking a little bit thick, you just put a little bit more water in. So you just make sure the air is out. Uh, 
and then you roll it with the rolling pin. So this is the easiest way to use it. So you see you can make it quite thin. Now what you do is, and you can just keep that in the fridge. So I could have done double amount and got it right up there. And when you want to use it, you just get some scissors, cut the amount that you use, peel the top off and slap it straight on the wound. And then bind that on. And what happens is you cut the plastic off the top where you're going to put it to the wound and you've got plastic on the back and then you bandage that up. So that's a very easy way to do it. Because mixing water with charcoal is like mixing dirt and water together. But when you use psyllium, that's the cheapest, or again ground linseed or um, uh, slippery on, they, uh, they, they just help to bind it. So that can stay in the fridge. And then if um, Jeremy gets a bee sting, we just scissors, cut, 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 peel the top off, slap it straight on. And if Jeremy has a bee sting, he's, it's hurting. So you want to move fast. So, you know, you haven't got time to get the bowl out and get the charcoal. It's just already in the fridge. And that, that'll keep almost indefinitely. And if you're not sure if it'll keep a long time, you can freeze it. And if someone has a bee sting or a snake bite, there's almost immediately inflammation there and the cold is very nice on it. You had a question? White spider bites. Yeah fantastic because there's nothing else is there huh for a white tail spider bite what you want is you want the poison to be absorbed out as soon as possible and if you've got a white tail spider bite I'd almost keep that on change it every 12 hours don't even take it off there was another question yeah um, charcoal you can buy in the health food shop and psyllium you can buy in the health food shop yeah. So when you apply it for chest, what would you do for um, <coughs> chest congestion? Yeah, you could apply that for chest in, uh, congestion. And if you do apply it for chest congestion, you'd cut it about that big and cut the plastic, peel the plastic off and put that on. And then you'd, you'd maybe put a cloth over that and bandage it on. So you can see the little bit I had to do with it, there's a bit on me, but um, if I was doing it in a bowl, the bowl's black, the spoon's black, but this is very, very easy and you just keep that in the fridge or the freezer. Excuse me, Barbara, was that pull out, um, and we're talking about stones, but if you had, say, a thorn or something, then you'd pull it out? No, it basically absorbs and neutralises poisons. If you had, uh, if I have a spinner that I can't get out, I'll often put grated potato on it overnight because the tips of your fingers are so tender to just to keep the inflammation down. And then uh, I wouldn't do anything the next day. And I'd actually let it get a little pussy because when it gets a bit pussy, you just get a needle and flick the top and push it and <laughs> just comes straight out. People get scared of pus. Remember, pus is just dead white blood cells doing their job. So I, I think that's the easiest way is to, is to, is to let, let it. But it, when it's very painful, you put grated potato on and it gets the tissue inflammation down. Um, about two years ago, I crashed on my bicycle on our bridge. The wheel got caught and I went over. And I've got a few injuries, a couple of cracked ribs, and I've got a dint in my face now, but it came up like a big lump because my cheek smashed against the... Thank you. My cheek um, crashed against the corner of the bridge. And I, I didn't go to the doctor because I thought, what are they going to do? And I've had people before that have had broken ribs and they all they're given is painkillers. So what I did, and I thought I've probably smashed that jaw, that cheekbone I mean, but I thought well, what can be done? 
So I, um, I put poultices on it. I put cold at first and then I put comfrey. You've heard of comfrey? Yeah. Comfrey has a growth stimulant. It's an excellent poultice. Mm. So I, um, I put that on and uh, the, the most painful was my finger. And I said to my son, why is my hand so sore? I mean, this is like this, the ribs are sore. He said, there's a big black splinter. It's gone under your nail. I mean, not under the nail, but at the bottom of where the nail ends. It had gone under there. That is so painful. So I put grated potato poultice on that, and that took the swelling down. <clears throat> and so I got the pain. And um, the next day, I put another grated potato poultice on it. And then the next day I didn't do anything because it wasn't sore anymore. And about two days later, I was looking at it and it had gone a little bit pussy and I pushed it a bit and it just popped out. I said, that's the easy way to do it. When it first happened, my son said, Mum, I'll get it out. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not. He tried, but it was just too painful. And that's why I say, if it's too painful, don't do it. Don't do it. I watched a man and a lady hold their little three-year-old down to get a splinter out of the bottom of her foot and she was just screaming hysterically and I just thought, stop it. Don't do that. You know, don't do that. Just put a poultice on it. Put a poultice on it. I've had a GP um, gave me zinc, uh, it was a cream at the time, zinc, and it's gone to a liquid man bowl and put it on the cement last week that was stubborn to get out and it came out. Mm. Mm. So Apparently so. sugar and bread will do it, that was an old one. Mm -hmm. Soap, there's a whole lot of... Yeah. Maybe just telling me geranium leaves. You know, you just do whatever you've got. Any questions before we close? Mm -hmm. The substitution of uh, hay and for what then? How often Substitution for cane for warfarin. You start with a quarter of a teaspoon three times a day. Yeah, and um, but the most powerful blood thinner really is water. And if a person's drinking coffee, they're they're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Jeffrey Costas' book has uh, about several pages to capsicum, and it seems to have the same qualities. I know myself personally, it saved me from having a serious operation, but it was called capsicum capsules, not not cayenne. Mm -hmm. Same thing. It, it is the same thing. Yes, because cayenne is from the capsicum family, whereas chili is from the chili family. Yeah. But you're right, 10 pages to cayenne pepper he divides. Yes, powerful herb. So if you were wanting to stop your half your dyspron mm -hmm. each day, would you just need one one lot of cayenne pepper? Well, you could have one lot or you could have it three times a day or just make sure you're drinking adequate water. Yeah. Yeah, and that's very easy stopped. Yes. Very easy stopped. That, that can be stopped immediately without ramifications. Yeah. Some medication can't be, but that can be. Yeah. Mm. So thank you for your attention. Mm. Good, good. Um, Thank you, Jeremy. You can go. <laughs> and tomorrow we'll be um, we'll be looking at hydrotherapy, water therapy. And tonight we're going to be looking at uh, diabetes and empowering the immune system. So there are two meetings tonight. So I look forward to seeing you there.